presented by Church Tech U, it's the ProPresenter Show. On today's show, how to use actions in ProPresenter 7. Hi, and welcome again to the ProPresenter Show. This is the show where I help you learn all about ProPresenter, strangely enough. Uh, my name's Paul Allen Clifford. So, they used to be called cues in ProPresenter 6. In fact, Pro 6 is when they were uh, introduced. But... Now they're called actions, and they're more powerful than ever before. So let's take a look in ProPresenter and see exactly how you use them. So here we are in ProPresenter, and you'll notice that I've got some odd little icons up here. Um, and those are, in fact, action icons. It's a very specific kind of action. You might be curious what that is. It looks a little like glasses and a mustache, like a disguise, like it's trying to look differently. And that's exactly what it is. It's the icon for uh, changing the look, which if you don't know what looks are in ProPresenter 7, I've got another tutorial for you. I'll leave a link below the video. So let's uh, just go to here, and I'm going to... Um, show you some of the different actions you can add in ProPresenter 7. So let's right click first off and go into um, add action. Now we do have some that are immediately available. I can clear any single layer. So the announcement layer, the messages layer, the slides layer, the props layer, uh, video input, uh, media, audio, can clear any of those or all of them. And let's say that I wanted to clear, let's say, the audio and the media layer, but none of the rest of them, I could put um, one of each of those on there. No problem. Audience look, I can switch between the looks. Again, I've got a tutorial for that. Um, and here are my looks that I have available to me. Stage display, this is uh, an interactive action. So if I click on it, it will give me some choices. So let's do that just because it's not immediately obvious. So I have these four different uh, stage screens that I have set up in my particular system because I go all the way out for you guys. So, so program... Um, if I wanted to, I could change that layout to, let's say, this one and this one to that one and then not change those two. Perfectly fine to do. Uh, then I can change whether the slides layer shows on just the stage or the stage and the audience. Stage and audience is the default. But let's say that the previous slide or another part of the presentation or part of your morning um, had changed that to just stage, then you can use the stage and audience. Then you click done. You'll notice that this is the icon that shows up. If I need to get rid of this or any other action, I can right click and go to remove action, in this case, the stage action. So. That's how I get rid of actions. Um, while I'm thinking about it, I can also edit them. Um, so here I can add any of my timers that I want to. If I have things set up, um, like in the communication portion, which is under advanced, I believe, in uh, ProPresenter Preferences. Here I've got the ability to turn a MIDI note on or off. Notice that that's that icon, and I can change the settings here as I want. Future tutorial on the MIDI integration in Pro 7, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, and if I wanted to edit that action, I can just choose Edit Action and change whatever I need to change. You know, click Done. Um, then going back to more of the add actions. I've got uh, audio input. I can change which audio input I'm using based on a particular slide. Or for all the other, yes there are more actions, 
I can go to the Actions palette. So let's do just that. Now the first thing I want you to know is it used to be that these were the only actions. It was just one page. But since ProPresenter 7.3, um, they've added some more. So you can scroll down as well. So you get some advanced actions and interactive actions. So here are all our clear actions that we had before. So if you needed to add more than one, it might be better to bring up the actions palette and then just drag and drop stuff. Uh, now we've got some of the new ones. I can add a graphic media action. I can add a media bin playlist because, believe it or not, down here most people just add one background. But what you can do is create a playlist down here and have one background go into the next background go into the next. So that would be great if you wanted to make a slideshow, for example. You could make a playlist with just the images from Vacation Bible School or a mission trip or what have you in it and have it automatically trigger after so long. Um, so you could uh, have that playlist play as a background starting on a particular slide. So that's another thing. Uh, you can play just a single audio file or you can play an audio bin playlist. So that's something they added in 7.3, which was... Uh, here, let me drag this over to the side so I can get back to it real quick. If I select here and select this, I'm not going to click this because last time I clicked something accidentally, I got a copyright notice, which I didn't mean to do. But anyway, all that to say. So that was on a live, so that's why I got that as opposed to the pre-recorded ones like the one you're watching. So I can select this particular playlist and have it start when I click on um, that particular slide. Might be helpful for when you're doing a uh, pre-service loop and you want sort of music to play while the slides are playing before church starts, for example. That's a good way to do that. Um, change the video input, change the audio input. I've already talked about, I think, um, interactive. So these are the stage, timer, prop, audience look. Notice there's our little um, Groucho Marx glasses is what I call them, message and communication. So I have access to basically all of them from here and um, or I can just bring up most of those from that drop down menu. So that is how you add actions to do multiple things just by clicking a slide in ProPresenter 7. Well, I hope that helped you. And if you like this content, I bet you'd like my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course. If so, head on over to uh, Trinity Digital Media. Nope, sorry, short link. Head on over to tdm.fyi slash pro7quick. And then just put in your name and email address so that I can make a login for you so that you can have access to that course. Normally a $29 value. I'm going to give it to to you for free if you go through that special link. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. That's where I was supposed to say that. And ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.